introduction the object and contents of the book of the dead by e a wallace budge this librivox recording is in the public domain introduction the object and contents of the book of the dead though the chapters of the book of the dead represent beliefs belonging to various periods of the long life of the egyptian nation and opinions held by several schools of thought in egypt the object of them all was to benefit the deceased they were intended to give him the power to have and to enjoy life everlasting to give him everything which he required in the life beyond the grave to ensure his victory over his foes to procure for him the power of going whithersoever he pleased and when and how he pleased to preserve the mummy intact and finally to enable his soul to enter into the bark of ra or into whatever abode of the blessed had been conceived of by him a perusal of the translations of the chapters will show the reader what their contents are but it will not be out of place here to group certain chapters which have a common object for the various beliefs which they represent then become more clear a certain number of the chapters of the book of the dead are hymns which are addressed either to ra or to osiris in the present work these are represented by the hymns from the papyri of ani kenna hu nefer and necht which i have called hymns introductory and to these we should add chapters one hundred and eighty two and one hundred and eighty three which are really hymns to osiris by thoth another collection of fine hymns is found in chapter fifteen where we have hymns to ra and osiris and a litany to osiris the papyrus of ani from which these are translated gives the oldest and most complete form of the chapter they are most important for they enable us to understand what attributes were ascribed to ra and it seems as if many of them were in later times transferred to osiris who was originally nothing but a god of the dead with these hymns should be mentioned the texts which accompany the judgment scene but these have already been described in the chapter on that subject given above and they are fully translated the judgment scene also leads us to the consideration of the one hundred and twenty-fifth chapter which is certainly one of the most important and interesting in the whole book it consists of three parts introduction negative confession and concluding text introduction was said by the deceased at the entrance to the hall of daba maati the negative confession was recited by him before the forty-two gods who sat in judgment upon him in this hall and the concluding text was uttered by him when he had passed the ordeal of judgment and was beginning his new life it is probable that these three texts were originally merely versions each of the other but in the eighteenth dynasty they are all copied together into papyri the deceased first asserted that he had not committed certain sins he next addressed forty-two gods by their names and declared before each that he had not committed the special sin which it was the duty of the god to punish and lastly he makes a third confession the first part of which is practically in the same words as a portion of the introduction the introduction provided the passwords which enabled him to enter the hall and the concluding text provided those which enabled him to go forth from it it is impossible to say when or how this beautiful chapter with its lofty conceptions of morality grew but although the form in which these are set forth is not older than the eighteenth dynasty the ideas themselves belong to a period which is as old as the rule of the kings of the third dynasty from the negative confession we see that the pious egyptian abhorred fraud theft deceit robbery with violence iniquity of every kind adultery unchastity and sins of wantonness manslaughter murder incitement to murder and that he delighted in showing he had wronged none in any way he neither purloined the things which belonged to his god nor did he slay the sacred animals 
he thought not lightly of the god of his city and he never cursed him he honoured his king and he neither wasted his neighbour's ploughed lands nor defiled his running stream he spake not haughtily he behaved not insolently he multiplied not his speech overmuch he abused no man he attacked no man he swore not at all he stirred not up strife he terrified no man he was not a man of wrath he spake evil of none and he never pried into matters to make mischief he judged not hastily he defrauded not his neighbour in the market he shut not his ears to the words of right and truth he sought not honours he never gave way to anger except for a proper cause and he sought not to enrich himself at the expense of his neighbours it is difficult to give the exact shades of meaning of many of the words in this confession but the general sense is thoroughly well made out the egyptian code of morals as may be seen from the one hundred and twenty fifth chapter was the grandest and most comprehensive of those now known to have existed among the nations of antiquity the one hundred and tenth chapter which describes the employments and enjoyments of the deceased in the sekhet heptep and sekhet aru or elysian fields contains ideas of the greatest antiquity which date probably from the time when the system of village communities was in vogue in egypt the deceased ploughs sows and reaps and lives exactly the same kind of life as a farmer would live in the fertile lands of the delta and it would seem that he enjoys all the pleasures which a human being enjoys upon earth in the fifth chapter of the book of the dead the deceased found a text which would free him from certain agricultural labours which had to be done in the elysian fields but inasmuch as the work of watering and top dressing the fields and sowing the crops had to be done by some one figures made in the form of the deceased and inscribed with his name were buried with the dead to toil for him such figures have often in their hands models of the basket in which the field labourer carried earth and the hoe with which he filled it and the text of the sixth chapter which was also inscribed upon them provided the deceased with substitutes to toil for him in the farms of the gods the reader will seek and seek in vain for many of the attributes of the prayers of christian nations and it is a noticeable fact that the egyptian had no conception of repentance at the judgment which took place in the hall of osiris he based his claim for admission into the kingdom of that god upon the fact that he had not committed certain sins and that he had feared god and honoured the king and had given bread to the hungry drink to the thirsty clothes to the naked and a boat to him that had suffered shipwreck on the nile his belief in the efficacy of works was great and when he had any doubt about their power to deliver him finally from the hosts of darkness he protected himself by means of amulets inscribed or plain and figures of gods painted upon his coffin and papyrus or cut in wood or on stones which possessed magical powers the chapters which refer to such amulets are numbers thirteen nineteen thirty b eighty nine one hundred one hundred and twenty five one hundred and thirty one hundred and thirty three one hundred and thirty four one hundred and thirty six a one hundred and thirty seven a one hundred and forty one hundred and forty four one hundred and fifty six one hundred and fifty seven one hundred and fifty eight one hundred and fifty nine one hundred sixty two one hundred and sixty three one hundred and sixty four one hundred and sixty five and one hundred and sixty six one of the most interesting chapters in the whole book is the seventeenth which contains a series of statements concerning the origin of the gods and the things of the next world to many of these statements more than one explanation of their meaning is appended and as these occur in copies of the chapter which are found inscribed upon coffins of the eleventh dynasty it is clear that already at that early date several opinions on these matters existed the views expressed in the chapter appear to be those of an ancient college of priests at heliopolis which became gradually adopted throughout egypt the vignettes which accompany the chapter in the best illuminated papyri are most elaborate and they show by their attention to detail that it formed one of the most important of the texts of this class which were copied for general use the 
sixty-fourth chapter was very highly esteemed and it was believed to be one of the oldest parts of the book of the dead already in the eleventh dynasty it existed in two versions one of which was thought to have been composed or edited in the first dynasty and the other in the fourth dynasty the longer version is entitled simply the chapter of coming forth by day in the underworld but the shorter is described as the chapter of knowing the chapters of coming forth by day in a single chapter whether we are to understand by the latter title that the chapter contained the essence of all the chapters of the book of the dead and that the deceased who was provided with it was as well protected as if he had copies of them all is not quite clear but it seems probable it will be noticed that several chapters are called chapters of coming forth by day and among them may be specially noticed chapters two and three which provide that the deceased may come forth in the underworld and live after he hath died even as doth ra day by day chapter sixty five which provides that the khu of the deceased shall live and shall inflict blows upon his enemy chapter sixty six which gives the deceased power to alight upon the forehead of ra chapter sixty eight which gives him mastery over everything which is in the underworld and enables him to journey about among the living chapters sixty nine seventy and seventy one wherein he identifies himself with osiris sa orion anubis horus and tem and declares his power over the winds of heaven chapter seventy two which enables him to come forth by day in all the forms which he pleaseth to take and to enter into an abode in the elysian fields where he shall be amply provided with wheat and barley and chapter one hundred and eighty which enables him to go about in the underworld with freedom of movement and to perform all the transformations of a living soul an important group of chapters referring to the transformations which a man may undergo if he pleases in the underworld is introduced by chapter seventy six wherein the deceased declares that he has been led unto the house of the king by the mantis or so-called praying insect these chapters enable him to transform himself into a hawk of gold chapter seventy seven into a divine hawk chapter seventy eight into the governor of the divine sovereign princes chapter seventy nine into the god who giveth light in the darkness chapter eighty into a lotus chapter eighty one a and chapter eighty one b into the god ptah and into a living being in anu chapter eighty two into a benu phoenix chapter eighty three into a heron chapter eighty four into a living soul chapter eighty five into a swallow chapter eighty six into the serpent sata chapter eighty seven and into a crocodile chapter eighty eight a considerable number of chapters refer as we should naturally expect to the preservation of the body of the deceased in the tomb and several were expressly written to give him power to resist the attacks of enemies and to obtain meat and drink and the power of motion in the underworld thus chapter one which is proved by its title and vignette to refer to the ceremonies which took place on the day of the funeral provides for the burial of the body in the proper way so that the deceased may go in after coming forth and chapters eight nine eleven twelve thirteen forty eight sixty seven one hundred and seven one hundred and eighteen one hundred and nineteen one hundred and twenty two one hundred and sixty one and one hundred and eighty enable him to make his way in the underworld without let or hindrance and to overcome his enemies the deceased wished to protect himself by means of magical formulae chapter twenty four provides these formulae for him and chapter thirty two gives him the power to keep hold of them chapters twenty one and twenty two give the deceased a mouth and chapter twenty three provides him with the power of opening it chapter twenty five gave him the faculty of remembering his name seven chapters twenty six through thirty b gave him a heart and provided him with prayers and formulae which prevented those who stole hearts from snatching it away from him 
and from driving it away from him when it was weighed in the judgment hall of osiris the crocodile which came to steal away the words of power and protection which the deceased had with him was repulsed by the words of chapter thirty one chapters thirty three thirty four thirty five thirty six thirty seven and thirty nine prevented him from being stung or bitten by snakes and serpents and did away with the power of the beetle apes shate to gnaw his body to pieces chapters thirty eight a and thirty eight b enabled him to escape from the deadly cobra and chapter forty delivered him from the power of the serpent who though he is here acting as the friend of horus by devouring the ass which typifies the fiend set is nevertheless to be feared in the underworld and the cities thereof punishment was inflicted on the dead and to provide the favourite of osiris with power to escape from stripes and wounds and decapitation at the deadly block chapters forty one forty two forty three and fifty were composed the deceased wished for a seat in the celestial anu heliopolis and this was given him by chapter seventy five and chapter forty seven prevented his throne and his habitation from being removed by any hostile being he sighed to have power over running water and to snuff the sweet breath of the north wind and these comforts were secured for him by chapters fifty four fifty five fifty six fifty seven fifty eight fifty nine sixty sixty one and sixty two the large number of chapters written for this purpose will show how great was the anxiety of the egyptian in this matter as fire and boiling water existed in the underworld he hastened to protect himself from burns or scalds by the use of chapters sixty three a and sixty three b proper food was as necessary to the ka or double of the deceased as fresh air and water and to ensure it against the need to eat filth and to drink dirty water chapters fifty two fifty three one hundred and five one hundred and ten one hundred and forty eight and one hundred and eighty nine were composed the idea of the ka being obliged to wander about starving and in search of food was so abhorrent to the pious egyptian that every text which could in any wise help to secure sufficient meat and drink for it was gladly copied over and over again the object of chapters four seventy four one hundred and seventeen one hundred and nineteen was to enable the deceased to walk about at will and to roam through re stau or the passages of the tomb and underworld and when his way was stopped by apep chapter seven enabled him to pass over the back of the fiend the union of the soul with the body was provided for by chapter eighty nine as was the escape of the soul and the shade from the bonds of the tomb by chapters ninety one and ninety two though the deceased had no wish to go to the east in the underworld see chapter ninety three he nevertheless wished to visit the celestial abydos a successful journey to this city was secured by the use of chapter one hundred and thirty eight in spite of the best efforts of the embalmers bodies sometimes rotted and perished in their tombs such calamities were averted by chapters forty five and forty six especially by chapter one hundred and fifty four which is one of the most interesting in the whole book overthrow in the underworld was averted by the use of chapter fifty one the wrath of the god was appeased by chapter fourteen and the danger of dying a second time was done away with by chapters forty four one hundred and seventy five and one hundred and seventy six the love of ritual and ceremony induced the egyptians to take special care about the arrangement of the mummy and coffin and funeral furniture in the mummy chamber and to make certain that all was properly done in this matter chapter one hundred and fifty one which consists of a view of the chamber and a group of short but important texts was composed the type of this chamber was of course the tomb of osiris the hall of osiris wherein the god dwelt with his princes could only be reached after certain doors and mansions and domains which were guarded by porters in the form of monsters had been successfully passed through by the deceased to enable the deceased to go through the seven mansions and the twenty-one pylons and the fifteen domains chapters one hundred and forty-five one hundred and 
forty four one hundred and forty seven one hundred and forty nine and one hundred and fifty were written these provided the deceased with the names of the beings who were in charge of the doors and supplied him with the speeches which it was necessary that he should make during his journey in the underworld the deceased came to a huge river which he was obliged to cross to enable him to embark in the mystical boat every portion of which possessed a name which he was bound to know and be able to repeat he provided himself with chapters ninety eight and ninety nine but this boat only served to take him across the river and he longed to be able to embark in the boat of ra and to sit in its bows and to sail about with the god for ever this delight however could only be secured for him by means of chapters one hundred one hundred and one one hundred and two one hundred and thirty four one hundred and thirty six a and one hundred and thirty six b and as a result copies of most of these chapters exist in nearly all large papyri the egyptian believed that he would encounter the foes who attacked osiris in the underworld and that the calamities which befell the god would come upon him also he who delivered osiris out of all his troubles was thoth the scribe of the gods and to him were addressed chapters eighteen and twenty which secured for the deceased the protection and triumph which this god had secured for his brother osiris the favour of thoth was so necessary that four chapters ninety four ninety five ninety six ninety seven were written to instruct the deceased to make an offering of a pallet and an ink jar to the god and how to become nigh unto him before the deceased could roam at will in the underworld it was necessary that he should know the deities of the chief cities of the four quarters of the land wherein he was chapters one hundred and seven and one hundred and eight enabled him to know the souls of amentet that is of the west chapter one hundred and nine enabled him to know the souls of the east chapter one hundred and twelve enabled him to know the souls of the city of pei in the north chapter one hundred and thirteen enabled him to know the souls of the city of nekem in the south chapter one hundred and fifteen enabled him to know the souls of anu and chapters one hundred and fourteen and one hundred and sixteen enabled him to know the souls of the city of kemenu hermopolis in the underworld the deceased was threatened by the danger of the snarer or fowler and his net and chapters one hundred and fifty three a and one hundred and fifty three b were written to enable him to escape from them two chapters one hundred and sixty nine and one hundred and seventy provided for the establishing of the funeral bed of the deceased two chapters one hundred and sixty eight a and one hundred and sixty eight b set out at length the libations which it was necessary for him to pour out chapter one hundred and twenty three gave him power to enter the great house chapters one hundred and twenty six one hundred and twenty seven one hundred and twenty eight one hundred and eighty five and one hundred and eighty six supplied him with the prayers which had to be said to the holy apes and to the gods who were the leaders and guides in the underworld and to osiris and hathor chapter one hundred and thirty two enabled him to go back to see his house chapter one hundred and fifty two gave him power to build a house upon earth chapter one hundred and seventy one provided him with the girdle of purity chapters one hundred and three one hundred and twenty four one hundred and thirty one and one hundred and eighty one gave him power to go in before the divine sovereign chiefs of osiris and to be nigh unto ra chapter one hundred and four gave him a seat among the great gods and chapter one hundred and eighty four brought him nigh unto osiris chapter one hundred and thirty which made perfect the coup was ordered to be recited on the birthday of osiris chapter one hundred and thirty three made the coup perfect before the great company of the gods chapter one hundred and thirty five which was to be recited on the day of the new moon gave the deceased power to become like unto thoth chapter one hundred and forty which was to be recited on the last day of the sixth month of the egyptian year enabled him to appear in glory before all the gods when the utchat or eye of ra was full and chapter one hundred and forty seven conferred upon him the power which the utchat possessed and enabled him to identify himself with it 
chapters one hundred and forty one and one hundred and forty two provided the text which a man was directed to recite for his father or for his son during the festival of amentet they made the deceased to be perfect with ra and with the gods and chapter one hundred and seventy three contained the addresses which horus made to his father osiris and which were also assumed to be made to the deceased by horus chapter one hundred and seventy two is a remarkable and beautiful composition in nine sections the contents of which were first made known in detail by m nabville in it the limbs of the deceased are described in highly poetical language and the comparisons at times resemble the descriptions of the limbs of the beloved one in the song of solomon four chapters one hundred and forty two one hundred and sixty three one hundred and sixty four and one hundred and sixty five have no equivalents in the recensions of the book of the dead older than the twenty sixth dynasty and as they contain foreign words and foreign ideas they are probably the work of non-egyptian authors each of them is followed by a long rubric which orders certain curious amulets to be made and the performance of ceremonies in chapters one hundred and seventy four and one hundred and seventy seven and one hundred and seventy eight we have extracts from the old heliopolitan recension of the book of the dead which was in use in the fifth and sixth dynasties and the comparison of the texts which thanks to m maspero we are now able to make is very instructive we can see how misunderstandings of the meaning of certain passages arose through the want of adequate determinatives and we can note how later copyists modified and adapted old texts to suit modern views thus in the passage from the text of unas we have a reference to the love-making of the deceased which is entirely omitted from the later copy of it given in the papyrus of neb seni and it seems as if the ideas expressed in it found no favour with the cultured mind of neb seni the great designer draughtsman and artist who was attached to the temple of ptah at memphis in a similar manner it will be noticed that most of the coarse expressions and ideas which are found in the religious books of the old period have no counterparts in the theban recension of the book of the dead it will be seen from the above brief summary that although the contents of the papyri containing the theban recension are miscellaneous there are references to other works connected with the burial of the dead from which no extracts are given among such may be specially mentioned the texts which are connected with the performance of the ceremony of opening the mouth but as it is impossible to give any adequate description of them in the space now left to me i refer the reader to my papyrus of ani in of introduction the object and contents of the book of the dead introduction a book of the dead of nessi Kansu, of the egyptian book of the dead by e a wallace budge this librivox recording is in the public domain introduction a book of the dead of nessi Kansu a priestess of amen about b c one thousand this holy god the lord of all the gods amen ra the lord of the throne of the two lands the governor of apt the holy soul who came into being in the beginning the great god who liveth by or upon maat the first divine matter which gave birth unto subsequent divine matter the being through whom every other god hath existence the one one who hath made everything which hath come into existence since primeval times when the world was created the being whose births are hidden whose evolutions are manifold and whose growths are unknown the holy form beloved terrible and mighty in his risings the lord of wealth the power Kepera, who createth every evolution of his existence except whom at the beginning none other existed who at the dawn in the primeval time was etenu the prince of rays and beams of light who having made himself to be seen caused all men to live 
who saileth over the celestial regions and faileth not for at dawn on the morrow his ordinances are made permanent who though an old man shineth in the form of one that is young and having brought or led the uttermost parts of eternity goeth round about the celestial regions and journeyeth through the tuat to illumine the two lands which he hath created the god who acteth as god who moulded himself who made the heavens and the earth by his will or heart the greatest of the great the mightiest of the mighty the prince who is mightier than the gods the young bull with sharp horns the protector of the two lands in his mighty name of the everlasting one who cometh and hath his might who bringeth the remotest limit of eternity the god prince who hath been prince from the time that he came into being the conqueror of the two lands by reason of his might the terrible one of the double divine face the divine aged one the divine form who dwelleth in the forms of all the gods the lion god with awesome eye the sovereign who casteth forth the two eyes the lord of flame which goeth against his enemies the god new the prince who advanceth at his hour to vivify that which cometh forth upon his potter's wheel the disk of the moon god who openeth a way both in heaven and upon earth for thy beautiful form the beneficent or operative god who is untiring and who is vigorous of heart both in rising and in setting from whose divine eyes come forth men and women at whose utterance the gods come into being and food is created and tchefau food is made and all things which are come into being the traverser of eternity the old man who maketh himself young again with myriads of pairs of eyes and numberless pairs of ears whose light is the guide of the god of millions of years the lord of life who giveth unto whom he pleaseth the circuit of the earth along with the seat of his divine face who setteth out upon his journey and suffereth no mishap by the way whose work none can destroy the lord of delight whose name is sweet and beloved and dawn mankind make supplication unto him the mighty one of victory the mighty one of twofold strength the possessor of fear the young bull who maketh an end of the hostile ones the mighty one who doeth battle with his foes through whose divine plans the earth came into being the soul who giveth light from his two uchats eyes the god by iti who created the divine transformations the holy one who is unknown the king who maketh kings to rule and who girdeth up the earth in its courses and to whose souls the gods and the goddesses pay homage by reason of the might of his terror since he hath gone before that which followeth endureth the creator of the world by his secret counsels the god capera who is unknown and who is more hidden than the other gods whose substitute is the divine disk the unknown one who hideth himself from that which cometh forth from him he is the flame which sendeth forth rays of light with mighty splendour but though he can be seen in form and observation can be made of him at his appearance yet he cannot be understood and at dawn mankind make supplication unto him his risings are of crystal among the company of the gods and he is the beloved object of every god the god nu cometh forward with the north wind in this god who is hidden who maketh decrees for millions of double millions of years whose ordinances are fixed and are not destroyed whose utterances are gracious and whose statutes fail not in his appointed time who giveth duration of life and doubleth the years of those unto whom he hath a favour who graciously protecteth him whom he hath set in his heart who hath formed eternity and everlastingness the king of the south and of the north amen ra the king of the gods the lord of heaven and of earth and of the deep and of the two mountains in whose form the earth began to exist he the mighty one who is more distinguished than all the gods of the first and foremost company amen ra the king of the gods the great god the beginning of what hath come into being hath sent forth his great and holy edict for the deification of nesi khonsu the daughter of ta henu 
tehuti both in amentet and in neter kurt and he saith i deify nesi kansu the daughter of ta henu tehuti in amentet and i deify her in neter kurt i have granted that she shall receive water in amentet and funeral offerings in neter kurt i deify her soul and her body in neter kurt and i will not let her soul be destroyed therein nay i deify her soul in neter kurt and i make it like unto that of every god and of every goddess who have been deified therein and like unto that of everything whatsoever which hath been deified in neter kurt i have granted that every god and every goddess and every divine being and everything which hath been deified shall receive her in neter kurt and i have granted that all her kinsfolk shall receive her therein with a gracious reception and i have granted that every good thing which cometh into being with a man when he assumeth this form whether he be carried off into the underworld or whether he become deified or whether every good thing be wrought for him where he is or whether he made to receive water and offerings or whether he be made to receive his cakes from those which those who have been deified receive or whether he be made to receive his divine offerings from those which those who have been deified receive shall be done for her so that it shall be with her amen ra the king of the gods the great god the prince of that which hath come into being from the beginning saith i cause nesi kansu the daughter of ta hen tehuti a to make every kind of food and every kind of drink which every god and every goddess who have been deified in the underworld make and i cause her to make every good thing which is with every god and every goddess who have been deified in the underworld and by means thereof i have delivered my servant pa nechem from every evil thing and i will not let any of the calamities which occur in the underworld fall upon nesi kansu to do her harm and i grant that her soul may come forth and that it may enter in according to its desire and never be repulsed amen ra the king of the gods the great god the prince of that which hath come into being from the beginning saith i have gone round i have examined the heart of nesi kansu the daughter of ta hen tehuti a and she hath done no evil thing against pa nechem the son of osset m kebet i have carefully examined her heart and i have not let her attack his life and i have not allowed her to attack his life through other folk i have carefully examined her heart and i have not let her do any evil thing unto him such as is done against a living man i have carefully examined her heart and i have not allowed her to do by means of other folk any of the evil things which are done against a living man amen ra the king of the gods the great god the prince of that which hath come into being from the beginning saith i have caused her not to seek to do any evil thing which would cause death unto pa nechem the son of osset m kebet i have carefully examined her heart and she hath done no evil thing unto him in particular nor any evil thing which could harm him in general she hath not worked against him by means of any god or any goddess who has been deified nor by means of any male ku or of any female ku who has been deified and she hath not worked against him by means of any kind of beings whatsoever who work schemes and plans so that beings of every kind may be obedient unto their words i have carefully examined her heart and see that she hath sought that which was good for him whilst he was upon earth and i have caused her to seek in every way to give him a long life upon earth and a life of health and soundness and power and strength and might and i have caused her in every way to procure for him happiness wherever the sound of his words was heard i have caused her to seek neither harm for him nor anything which could inflict an injury upon man nor anything which could cause evil to pa nechem the son of osset m kebet i have caused her not to seek any evil thing or any noxious thing which would induce death or any harmful thing like unto those things which make the heart of man to tremble or those which do harm unto the men and women who were beloved by potnetchen nor unto him by making his heart terrified at them by means of the evil words which have been directed against them the men and women i have caused all that concerneth the heart and soul of nesi kansu to be in good case that is to say her heart hath not been driven away from her soul her soul hath not been driven away from her heart her heart hath not been driven away from herself 
nessie khonsu herself hath not been in any way driven back with the repulse with which a being in her form that is to say a being who hath been deified in the underworld whatever its nature may be is sometimes repulsed and no evil thing whatsoever such as may be done unto the human being who is in a state like unto hers hath been done unto her nay but i have given all that could delight nessie khonsu namely that pa netchem might enjoy a very long life along with might and strength and power that his life might not be cut short that no evil thing of any kind whatsoever and none of the things which do harm unto a man and strike terror into his heart might come nigh him or his wives or his children or his brethren or atawi or nesta neb asher or masa herotha or tichui nefer the children of nesi khonsu or the brethren of nesi khonsu and i have caused that everything which would be of advantage to pa Netchim, and all that would be of benefit to him in any way whatsoever and which could happen to a man in his condition and an exceedingly long life for himself and his wives and his children and his brethren may also come to nesi khonsu and to her children and to her sisters amen ra the king of the gods the great god the prince of that which hath come into being from the beginning saith i grant that all things of whatever kinds they may be which a man hath when he is in the state in which nesi khonsu is and by which he is deified shall be possessed by her and i grant that the seventy addresses to ra may be recited in my name so that her soul may not be destroyed in the underworld amen ra the king of the gods the great god the prince of that which hath come into being from the beginning saith every good word which can deify nesi khonsu which will give her power to receive water and offerings and which shall be uttered or said before me by any person whatsoever i will fulfil to the uttermost omitting nothing every good word which shall be uttered before me on behalf of nesi khonsu i will fulfil at every season of the heavens when shu cometh forth in such wise that none of the evil things which can reach a person who is in the condition in which she is shall touch her at any season of the heavens when shu cometh forth from the waters with his weapons and when day beginneth in the sky and i will utterly do away with the evil effect of every word which may be spoken by any person whatsoever of a being who is in the state in which is nesi khonsu omitting nothing at every season of the heavens when shu cometh forth from the waters with his weapons and when day beginneth in the sky amen ra the king of the gods the great god the prince of that which hath come into being from the beginning saith i have caused the seventy addresses to ra to be recited in my name and i have not allowed any single benefit which belongeth to a man who is in the condition in which is nesi khonsu to escape her and i have caused her to receive offerings bread and ale and unguents and wine and pomade and milk and raisins and i have caused her to receive all the benefits and all the good things which a being who is in her condition and who is favoured by me and who hath been deified can receive and i have caused her to share equally with every god and every goddess every good thing whatsoever which those who have been deified in the underworld receive and i have caused her to receive her divine offerings along with the gods amen ra the king of the gods the great god the prince of that which hath come into being from the beginning saith if the word by which the offering of seket aru and of a field in seket aru is made is not one which is good for the person who is in the condition in which is nesi khonsu and it hath no effect i myself will make unto her the offering of seket aru and of a field in seket aru when that which is beneficial for her in this kind of offering shall come into being and it shall suffer no diminution thereof whatsoever amen ra the king of the gods the great god the prince of that which hath come into being from the beginning saith all good things which shall be spoken in my presence saying let such and such things be done for nesi khonsu the daughter of ta henu tehutia i will perform for her and they shall not be lessened and they shall not be abrogated and nothing therefrom shall be cut off at every season of the heavens when shu cometh forth and moreover she shall receive in abundance the choicest things of all that is good for her even as do every man and every god who have been deified and who go forth and who come in and who journey unto every place as they please amen ra the king of the gods the great god the prince of that which hath come into being from the beginning saith as concerning all good things which have been spoken in my presence that is to say 
performed them for pa Nechem, the son of auset m kebet my servant and for his wives and his children and his brethren and his friends and for those for whom his heart is afraid lest evil come upon them behold i will send forth my great and mighty and holy word into every place that it may cause every good thing to be with pa Nechem and his wives and his children and his brethren and all his friends in such wise that if any man shall omit to say let the decree of amen ra the king of the gods the great god the prince of that which hath come into being from the beginning be performed i myself will make that which the great god hath spoken to come to pass End of introduction the book of the dead of nessie Kansu. introduction a book of the dead of the graeco roman period of the egyptian book of the dead by e a wallace budge this librivox recording is in the public domain introduction a book of the dead of the graeco roman period the book of breathings from the papyrus of karasher one here beginneth the book of breathings one hail osiris karasher the son of teshen atit thou art pure and thy heart is pure the four parts of thee are pure two thy hind parts are cleansed and thy interior is made clean with bet incense and natron no member of thine hath any defect whatsoever the osiris karasher three the son of tashenatit hath been cleansed by means of the waters of seket hetep that is field of peace which is situated to the north of seket sanahem that is field of the grasshoppers four the goddesses uat chit and nekebet make thee to be pure at the eighth hour of the night and at the eighth hour of the day come then o osiris five karasher the son of tashenatit and enter into the hall of maati thou art pure from all offence and from six defect of every kind stone of right and truth is thy name hail osiris karasher the son of tashenatit thou enterest the tuat that is underworld seven as one mighty in purity thou art purified by the two maat goddesses in the great hall a libation hath been made for thee in the hall of seb and thy body hath been made pure eight in the hall of shu thou lookest upon ra when he setteth as tem at eventide amen is nigh unto thee to give thee air nine and ptah likewise to mould into form thy members thou enterest the horizon along with ra they receive thy soul in the neshem boat of osiris ten they make thy soul divine in the house of seb and they make thee to be triumphant for ever and for ever hail osiris karasher the son of teshenetit eleven thy name is made to endure thy material body is established and thy spiritual body is made to germinate thou art turned back neither in heaven nor upon earth thy face shineth before twelve ra thy soul liveth before amen and thy material body is renewed before osiris thou breathest for ever and for ever thy soul maketh offerings unto thee thirteen of cakes and ale and beasts and feathered fowl and cool water in the course of each day thou comest and it is triumphant the flesh is upon thy bones fourteen and thy form is even as it was upon earth thou takest drink into thy body thou eatest with thy mouth and thou receivest bread along with the souls fifteen of the gods the god anubis protecteth thee and he maketh himself thy protector thou art not turned away from the gates of the tuat that is underworld thoth the most mighty sixteen god the lord of kemenu cometh to thee and he writeth for thee the book of breathings with his own fingers then doth thy soul breathe for seventeen ever and ever and thy form is made anew with life upon earth thou art made divine along with the souls of the gods thy heart is the heart of ra and thy 
members nineteen are the members of the great god hail osiris karasher the son of tashenatit amen is nigh unto thee twenty to make thee to live again and the god apuat that is the opener of the ways hath opened up for thee a prosperous path thou seest with thine eyes thou hearest with thine ears thou speakest with thy mouth twenty one and thou walkest with thy legs thy soul hath been made divine in the tuat so that it may make every transformation at thy will thou breathest with delight the odours of twenty two the holy persea tree of anu that is heliopolis thou wakest each day and seest the rays of ra amen cometh to thee twenty three having the breath of life and he causeth thee to draw thy breath within thy funeral house thou appearest upon the earth each day and the book of breathings of thoth twenty four is a protection unto thee for thereby dost thou draw thy breath each day and thereby do thine eyes behold the beams of the divine disk the goddess of right and truth maketh speech on thy behalf before osiris twenty five and her writings are upon thy tongue horus the avenger of his father protecteth thy body he maketh thy soul to be divine like those of all the gods to one the god ra vivifieth thy soul and the soul of shu uniteth the passages of thy nostrils hail osiris karasher to the son of Tashenatit, thy soul draweth its breath in the place which thou lovest thou art even as osiris osiris the governor of those in amentet is thy name three the water flood of the prince cometh unto thee from abu elephantine and it filleth thy table of offerings with techefa food hail osiris karasher for the son of Tashenatit, the gods of the south and of the north come unto thee and thou art led by them to the ends of the countries of five millions of years thy soul liveth thou art in the following of osiris and thou drawest thy breath in re stau the strength which protecteth thee six is hidden in the lord of setet and in the great god thy material body liveth in tatu and in nifertet and thy soul liveth in heaven seven each day hail osiris karasha the son of tashenatit the goddess seket hath gained the mastery over what is baleful to thee heru aa eight abu protecteth thee heru sheshet hara maketh thy heart and heru maati protecteth thy body or as others say nine thy tongue thou art stablished with life and strength and health and thou art firmly seated upon thy throne in ta chesertet come then osiris karasher ten the son of tashenatit thou risest in thy form thou art arrayed in thine ornaments thou hast firm hold upon life thou passest thy days eleven in health thou journeyest hither and thither and thou drawest thy breath in every place whatsoever ra riseth upon thine abode even as osiris thou drawest thy breath twelve and thou livest through his rays amen ra heru kuti vivifieth thy ka that is double and he maketh thee to flourish by means of the book of breathings thou thirteen art in the following of osiris horus the lord of the Henubot. thou art like the great god at the head of the gods thy face liveth o thou whose births are lovely thy name fourteen blossometh each day thou goest into the most mighty and divine hall in tatu thou seest him that is head of those in amentet during the uka festival the order of the fifteen is sweet as that of the venerable ones therein and thy name is magnified like those of the divine spiritual bodies hail osiris karasher the son of sixteen tashenatit thy soul liveth through the book of breathings thou art united through the book of breathings seventeen thou enterest into the tuat and hast no enemy therein thou art as a living soul in tatu and thou hast thine heart which hath not departed from thee thou hast eighteen thine eyes and they open daily the gods who are in the train of osiris speak unto osiris karasher the son of tashenatit 
nineteen saying thou followest ra and thou followest osiris and thy soul doth live for ever and ever the gods who dwell in the tuat twenty of osiris the governor of those in amentet speak unto osiris karasha the son of tashenatit saying the gates of the tuat are opened unto him twenty one let him show himself in neter kertet verily his soul shall live for ever he shall build habitations for himself in twenty two neter kertet the god thereof shall show favour unto his ka and he shall receive the book of breathings and verily he shall twenty three draw his breath may osiris the governor of those in amentet the great god the lord of abydos grant a royal oblation may he give offerings of cakes twenty four and ale and oxen and wine and akit drink and bread and tachu fa food and all beautiful things to the ka of osiris karasha twenty five the son of tashenatit thy soul doth live and thy material body doth germinate by the command of ra himself thou shalt never perish and thou shalt never suffer diminution three one but shalt be like ra for ever and for ever hail usek nemtet who comest forth from anu the osiris karasha the son of tu tashenatit hath not committed sin hail urat who comest forth from karaba the osiris karasha the son of tashenatit three hath not done deeds of violence hail fenti four who comest forth from kamenu the osiris karasha the son of tashenatit five hath not committed slaughter hail amam maat who cometh forth from the two quarti the osiris karasha six the son of tushenatit hath not plundered the possessions of the dead hail naha ra seven who cometh forth from rustau the osiris karasha the son of tushenatit eight hath not inflicted injury hail rereti who cometh forth from heaven the osiris nine karasha the son of tushenatit hath not committed sins of of the heart hail maati m ket ten who cometh forth from sekum the osiris karasha the son of tushenatit eleven hath not made revolt hail ye gods who are in the tuat hearken ye unto the voice of osiris karasha the twelve son of tushenatit and let him come before you for there is neither any evil whatsoever nor any sin whatsoever thirteen with him and no accuser can stand before him he liveth upon maat he feedeth upon maat and he hath satisfied fourteen the heart of the gods by all that he hath done he hath given food to the hungry and water to the thirsty and clothes fifteen to the naked he hath made offerings to the gods and to the khus and no sixteen report whatsoever hath been made against him before the gods o come let him enter the tuat and not be repulsed seventeen come let him follow osiris with the gods of the querti let him be a favoured being among the favoured ones eighteen and let him be divine among the perfect ones come let him live come let his soul live let his soul nineteen be received in whatever place it pleaseth and let him receive the book of breathings twenty come let him draw breath with his soul in the tuat and let him perform twenty-one whatsoever transformations he will along with those who are in amentet come let his soul go into every place where it would be and let it live upon earth for ever and for ever and for ever end of introduction a book of the dead of the greco-roman period introduction a book of the dead of the roman period of the egyptian book of the dead by e a wallace budge this librivox recording is in the public domain a book of the dead of the roman period hail hathor tackert piru abt triumphant born of fent nubt triumphant thy soul liveth in heaven before ra gifts are made unto thy ka before the gods thy spiritual body is glorious among the khus thy name is stablished upon earth before seb 
and thy body shall endure permanently in the netter kurt underworld or grave thy house is in the possession of thy children and thy husband who weep as they follow thee when thou goest about therein with thy children and they are rewarded for what they have done for thy ka they have given thee good and perfect burial and they make offerings to thy ka at the west of thebes in the sight of the folk of thy city and of the lady of the temples the beautiful amentet stretcheth out her hands to receive thee according to the decree of the lady of abydos thy tomb shall never be overthrown thy swathings shall never be torn in pieces and thy body shall never be mutilated the god anubis hath received thee in the land of the hall of double Maat, and he hath made thee to be one of those favoured and perfect beings who are in the following of seker thy soul flieth up on high to meet the soul of the gods and it hovereth also over thy dead body which is in akert thou journeyest about upon earth thou seest all that are therein thou observest all the affairs of thy house and thou eatest bread there having been performed by thee transformations which are like unto those of baba thou goest to the city of nif urtet at the festival of the altars on the night of the festival of six and at the festival of anep thou goest into the city of nif urtet at the festival of the little heat and the festival of lifting up the sky thou goest into the city of tatu on the festival of Kahraka, on the day when the tet is set up the breath of the wind hath made thy throat to breathe with kensu and shu the mighty one in thebes and thou hast abundant offerings for thy ka every tenth day with the living image of ra in thebes thy life is for ever and ever and thy sovereignty is for ever and thou shalt endure for an endless number of periods of twice sixty years End of introduction a book of the dead of the roman period introductory hymns of the egyptian book of the dead by e a wallace budge this librivox recording is in the public domain hymns introductory to the book of the dead the judgment etc hymn to ra when he riseth vignette the scribe ani standing with hands raised in adoration before a table of offerings consisting of haunches of beef loaves of bread and cakes vases of wine and oil fruits and flowers he wears a fringed linen garment and has a wig necklace bracelets etc behind him stands his wife thuthu a member of the college of amen ra at thebes she is similarly robed and holds a sistrum a vine branch and a manat or emblem of pleasure in her hands text a hymn of praise to ra when he riseth in the eastern part of heaven behold osiris i need the scribe of the holy offerings of all the gods who saith homage to thee o thou who hast come as capera capera the creator of the gods thou risest thou shinest thou makest light in thy mother the goddess nut thou art crowned king of the gods thy mother nut doeth an act of homage unto thee with both her hands the land of manu receiveth thee with satisfaction and the goddess maat embraceth thee both at morn and at eve may he ra give glory and power and triumph and a coming forth as a living soul to see heru kuti horus of the two horizons to the double ka of osiris the scribe ani victorious before osiris who saith 
hail all ye gods of the temple of the soul who weigh heaven and earth in the balance and who provide sepulchral meals in abundance hail tatunan thou one thou creator of mankind and maker of the substance of the gods of the south and of the north of the west and of the east o come and acclaim ye ra the lord of heaven the prince life health strength the creator of the gods and adore ye him in his beautiful form at his rising in the atet boat they who dwell in the heights and they who dwell in the depths worship thee the god thoth and the goddess maat have written down thy course for thee daily and every day thine enemy the serpent hath been given over to the fire the serpent fiend sebau hath fallen down headlong his arms have been bound in chains and his legs hath ra hacked off from him the children of impotent revolt shall never more rise up the temple of the aged one keepeth festival and the voice of those who rejoice is in the mighty dwelling the gods exult when they see ra as he riseth and when his beams flood the world with light the majesty of the holy god goeth forth and advanceth even unto the land of manu he maketh brilliant the earth at his birth each day he journeyeth on to the place where he was yesterday o be thou at peace with me and let me behold thy beauties may i journey forth upon earth may i smite the ass may i crush the serpent fiend sabau may i destroy apep in his hour may i see the abtu fish at his season and the ant fish piloting the ant boat in its lake may i see horus acting as a steersman with the god thoth and the goddess maat one on each side of him may i grasp the bows of the sectet boat and the stern of the atet boat may he ra grant unto the double ka of osiris ani to behold the disk of the sun and to see the moon god without ceasing each and every day and may my soul come forth and walk hither and thither and whithersoever it pleaseth may my name be proclaimed and may it be found upon the board of the table of offerings may offerings be made unto me in my presence even as they are made unto the followers of horus and may there be made ready for me a seat in the boat of the sun on the day when the god goeth forth and may i be received into the presence of osiris in the land of victory hymn to ra when he riseth vignette kenna and his wife standing with hands raised in adoration text a hymn of praise to ra when he riseth in the eastern part of heaven behold osiris kenna the merchant who saith homage to thee o ra when thou risest and to thee o temu in thy risings of beauty thou risest thou risest thou shinest thou shinest at dawn of day thou art crowned king of the gods and the goddess shuti performeth an act of homage unto thee the company of the gods praise thee from the places of sunrise and sunset thou passest over the height of heaven and thy heart is filled with gladness the sectet boat draweth on and ra advanceth in the atet boat with fair winds ra rejoiceth ra rejoiceth thy father is new thy mother is nut o thou who art crowned as ra herukuti ra harmachus thy divine boat advanceth in peace thine enemy hath been given over to the flame and he hath fallen his head hath been cut off 
the heart of the lady of life isis is glad because the foe of her lord hath fallen headlong the mariners of ra have content of heart and anu heliopolis exulteth the merchant kenna victorious saith i have come to thee o lord of the gods temu herukuti temu hamarchus whom maat directeth i know that whereupon thou dost live grant thou that i may be like unto one of those who are thy favoured ones among the followers of the great god may my name be proclaimed may it be found may it be set with their names the oars have been taken into the sectet boat and the boat of the sun advanceth in peace may i see ra when he appeareth in the sky at dawn and when his enemy hath fallen at the block may i see horus working the rudder on each side and bringing along the boat may i see the obtu fish at its time of coming into being may i see the ant fish as it becometh the pilot of the ant boat in its waters o thou only one o thou perfect one o thou who dost endure who sufferest never an evil moment who cannot be smitten down by him that doeth deeds of might none other shall have power and might over the things which belong to thee none shall obtain by fraud possession of the things which belong to the divine father who hath need of abundance the tongue of veneration the lord of abtu abadas the merchant kenna victorious saith homage to thee o heru kuti temu heru kepera thou mighty hawk who makest glad the body of man thou beautiful of face by reason of thy two great plumes awake o lord of beauty at dawn when the company of the gods and mortals say unto thee hail they sing hymns of praise unto thee at eventide and the starry deities also adore thee o thou firstborn who dost lie motionless thy mother showeth loving-kindness unto thee daily ra liveth and the serpent fiend nak is dead thou art in good case for thine enemy hath fallen headlong thou sailest over heaven with life and strength the goddess nehebka is in the atet boat and thy boat rejoiceth thy heart is glad and the two uriai goddesses rise upon thy brow him to ra when he riseth vignette kenna and his wife standing with hands raised in adoration text a hymn of praise to ra when he riseth in the eastern part of heaven behold osiris kenna the merchant triumphant who saith homage to thee o thou who risest in new and who at thy manifestation dost make the world bright with light the whole company of gods sing hymns of praise unto thee after thou hast come forth the divine merti who minister unto thee cherish thee as king of the north and south thou beautiful and beloved man-child when thou risest men and women live the nations rejoice in thee and the souls of anu heliopolis sing unto thee songs of joy the souls of the cities of pe and neken exalt thee the apes of dawn adore thee and all beasts and cattle praise thee with one accord the goddess seba overthroweth thine enemies therefore rejoice thou within thy boat thy mariners are content thereat thou hast attained unto the atet boat and thy heart swelleth with joy o lord of the gods when thou didst create them they ascribed unto thee praises the azure goddess nut doth compass thee on every side and the god nu floodeth thee with his rays of light o cast thou thy light upon me and let me see thy beauties me the osiris kenna the merchant victorious and when thou goest forth over the earth i will sing praises unto thy fair face thou risest in heaven's horizon and thy disc is adored when it resteth upon the mountain to give life unto the world saith kenna the merchant victorious thou risest thou risest and thou comest 
forth from the god nu thou dost renew thy youth and thou dost set thyself in the place where thou wast yesterday o divine youth who hast created thyself i am not able to describe thee thou hast come with thy diadems and thou hast made heaven and earth bright with thy rays of pure emerald light the land of punt is established to give the perfumes which thou smellest with thy nostrils thou risest o marvellous being in heaven the two serpent goddesses murti are established upon thy brow and thou art the giver of laws o lord of the world and of the inhabitants thereof all the gods and kenna the merchant victorious adore thee hymn to ra when he riseth text a hymn of praise to ra when he riseth in the eastern part of heaven behold osiris hu nefer victorious who saith homage to thee o thou who art ra when thou risest and temu when thou settest thou risest thou risest thou shinest thou shinest thou who art crowned king of the gods thou art the lord of heaven thou art the lord of earth thou art the creator of those who dwell in the heights and of those who dwell in the depths thou art the god one who came into being in the beginning of time thou didst create the earth thou didst fashion man thou didst make the watery abyss of the sky thou didst form hapi the nile thou didst create the watery abyss and thou dost give life unto all that therein is thou hast knit together the mountains thou hast made mankind and the beasts of the field to come into being thou hast made the heavens and the earth worshipped be thou whom the goddess maat embraceth at morn and at eve thou dost travel across the sky with heart swelling with joy the lake of testes becometh contented thereat the serpent fiend nak hath fallen and his two arms are cut off the sectet boat receiveth fair winds and the heart of him that is in the shrine thereof rejoiceth thou art crowned prince of heaven thou art the one dowered with all sovereignty who comest forth from the sky ra is victorious o thou divine youth thou heir of everlastingness thou self-begotten one o thou who didst give thyself birth o one mighty one of myriad forms and aspects king of the world prince of anu heliopolis lord of eternity and ruler of everlastingness the company of the gods rejoice when thou risest and when thou sailest across the sky o thou who art exalted in the sectet boat homage to thee o amen ra who dost rest upon maat and who passest over the heaven every face seeth thee thou dost wax great as thy majesty doth advance and thy rays are upon all faces thou art unknown and no tongue is worthy to declare thy likeness only thou thyself canst do this thou art one even as is he that bringeth the tenna basket men praise thee in thy name ra and they swear by thee for thou art lord over them thou hearest with thine ears and thou seest with thine eyes millions of years have gone over the world i cannot tell the number of those through which thou hast passed thy heart hath decreed a day of happiness in thy name of traveller thou dost pass over and dost travel through untold spaces requiring millions and hundreds of thousands of years to pass over thou passest through them in peace and thou steerest thy way across the watery abyss to the place which thou lovest this thou doest in one little moment of time and then thou dost sink down and dost make an end of the hours behold osiris the governor of the palace of the lord of the two lands said he the first who nefer victorious saith hail my lord thou who passest through eternity whose being is everlasting hail thou disc lord of beams of light thou risest and thou makest all mankind to live grant thou that i may behold thee at dawn each day hymn to ra when he riseth text a hymn of praise to ra by neket 
the royal scribe the captain of soldiers who saith homage to thee o thou glorious being thou who art dowered with all sovereignty o tem heru kuti tem hemarchus when thou risest in the horizon of heaven a cry of joy cometh forth to thee from the mouth of all peoples o thou beautiful being thou dost renew thyself in thy season in the form of the disk within thy mother hathor therefore in every place every heart swelleth with joy at thy rising for ever the regions of the north and south come to thee with homage and send forth acclamations at thy rising in the horizon of heaven thou illuminest the two lands with rays of turquoise light o ra thou who art herukuti the marcus the divine man-child the heir of eternity self-begotten and self-born king of earth prince of the tuat governor of the regions of akert thou comest forth from the water thou hast sprung from the god nu who cherisheth thee and ordereth thy members o thou god of life thou lord of love all men live when thou shinest thou art crowned king of the gods the goddess nut doeth homage unto thee and the goddess maat embraceth thee at all times those who are in thy following sing unto thee with joy and bow down their foreheads to the earth when they meet thee thou lord of heaven thou lord of earth thou king of right and truth thou lord of eternity thou prince of everlastingness thou sovereign of all the gods thou god of life thou creator of eternity thou maker of heaven wherein thou art firmly established the company of the gods rejoice at thy rising the earth is glad when it beholdeth thy rays the peoples that have been long dead come forth with cries of joy to see thy beauties every day thou goest forth each day over heaven and earth and art made strong each day by thy mother nut thou passest through the heights of heaven thy heart swelleth with joy and the lake of testes is content thereat the serpent fiend hath fallen his arms are hewn off the knife hath cut asunder his joints ra liveth in maat the beautiful the sectet boat draweth on and cometh into port the south and the north the west and the east turn to praise thee o thou primeval substance of the earth who didst come into being of thine own accord isis and nephthys salute thee they sing unto thee songs of joy at thy rising in the boat they protect thee with their hands the souls of the east follow thee the souls of the west praise thee thou art the ruler of all the gods and thou hast joy of heart within thy shrine for the serpent fiend nock hath been condemned to the fire and thy heart shall be joyful for ever the mother nut is a judge to thy father nu him to osiris unnefer vignette the scribe of ani standing with both hands raised in adoration before a table of offerings consisting of haunches of beef loaves of bread and cakes vases of wine and oil fruits and flowers etc he wears a fringed linen garment and a wig bracelets etc behind him stands his wife thuthu a member of the college of amen ra at thebes she is similarly robed and holds a sistrum a vine branch and a manat in her hands text glory be to osiris unnefer the great god within abtu abidas king of eternity lord of the everlasting who passeth through millions of years in his existence eldest son of the womb of nut engendered by seb the Urpot, lord of the crowns of the north and south lord of the lofty white crown as prince of gods and of men he hath received the crook and the whip and the dignity of his divine fathers let thy heart which is in the mountain of ament be content for thy son horus is established upon thy throne thou art crowned lord of tatu and ruler of abtu abidas through thee the world waxeth green in triumph before the might of neberchur he leadeth in his train that which is and that which is not yet in his name of taher staneth he toweth along the earth in his name of seker he is exceedingly mighty and most terrible is in his name osiris he endureth for ever and for ever in his name of unnefer 
homage to thee king of kings lord of lords prince of princes who from the womb of nut hast ruled the world and akert thy body is of bright and shining metal thy head is of azure blue and the brilliance of the turquoise encircleth thee o god on of millions of years all pervading with thy body and beautiful in countenance in ta chert grant thou to the ka double of osiris the scribe ani splendour in heaven and might upon earth and triumph in the underworld and grant that i may sail down to tatu like a living soul and up to ab to abydos like a benu bird and that i may go in and come out without repulse at the pylons of the lords of the underworld may there be given unto me loaves of bread in the house of coolness and offerings of food in anu heliopolis and a homestead for ever in Sekhet aru with wheat and barley therefore the scene of the weighing of the heart of the dead vignette the scribe ani and his wife thuthu enter the hall of double maat wherein the heart symbolic of the conscience is to be weighed in the balance against the feather emblematic of right and truth in the upper register are the gods who sit in judgment whose names are harmarchus the great god in his boat temu shu tefnut the lady of heaven seb nut the lady of heaven isis nephthys horus the great god hathor the lady of amenta who and sa on the standard of the scales sits the dog-headed ape the companion of thoth the scribe of the gods and the god anubis jackal-headed tests the tongue of the balance on the left of the balance facing anubis are ani's luck the meskhen or cubit with human head thought by some to be connected with the place of birth the goddesses meskhenet and renanet who presided over the birth birthplace and early education of children and the soul of ani in the form of a human-headed bird standing on a pylon on the right of the balance behind anubis stands thoth the scribe of the gods who holds in his hands his reed-pan and palette with which to record the result of the trial behind thoth stands the monster called either amam the devourer or amit the eater of the dead text osiris the scribe of ni saith my heart my mother my heart my mother my heart my coming into being may there be nothing to resist me at my judgment may there be no opposition to me from the tchatcha may there be no parting of thee from me in the presence of him that keepeth the scales thou art my ka double within my body which knitteth together and strengtheneth my limbs mayest thou come forth to the place of happiness to which i am advancing may the shenet not cause my name to stink and may no lies be spoken against me in the presence of the god good good is it for thee to hear thoth the judge of right and truth of the great company of the gods who are in the presence of osiris saith hear ye this judgment the heart of osiris hath in very truth been weighed and his soul has stood as a witness for him it hath been found true by trial in the great balance there hath not been found any wickedness in him he hath not wasted the offerings in the temples he hath not done harm by his deeds and he hath uttered no evil reports while he was upon earth the great company of the gods reply to thoth who dwelleth in kemmenu hermopolis that which cometh forth from thy mouth shall be declared true osiris the scribe ani victorious is holy and righteous he hath not sinned neither hath he done evil against us it shall not be allowed to the devourer amamet to prevail over him meat offerings and entrance into the presence of the god osiris shall be granted unto him together with the homestead for ever in second het tepu as unto the followers of horus vignette the scribe ani is led by horus the son of isis into the presence of osiris who is enthroned within a shrine in the form of a funeral chest osiris has upon his head the atef crown and he holds in his hands the crook the sceptre and the whip emblematic of authority dominion and sovereignty from his neck hangs the manat his title here is osiris the lord of everlastingness 
behind him stand nephthys his sister and on his right hand and isis his sister and wife on his left before him standing on a lotus flower are the gods of the cardinal points or as they are sometimes called the children of horus and children of osiris the first mestha has the head of a man the second hapi the head of an ape the third tuamatef the head of a jackal and the fourth queb senuf the head of a hawk near the lotus hangs the skin of an animal the side of the throne of osiris is painted to resemble that of a funeral chest the roof of the shrine is supported on pillars with lotus capitals and is surmounted by a figure of horus sept or horus secker and by rows of uraei the pedestal on which the shrine rests is in the form of the hieroglyphic which is emblematic of maat or right and truth before the shrine is a table of offerings by which on a reed mat kneels ani with his right hand raised in adoration in the left hand he holds the kerp sceptre he wears on his head a whitened wig and the so-called cone the signification of which is unknown text saith horus the son of isis i have come to thee o un nefer and i have brought unto thee the osiris ani his heart is found righteous and it hath come forth from the balance it hath not sinned against any god or any goddess thoth hath waited according to the decree pronounced unto him by the company of the gods and it is most true and righteous grant that cakes and ale may be given unto him and let him appear in the presence of the god osiris and let him be like unto the followers of horus for ever and for ever and osiris ani saith behold i am in thy presence o lord of amentet there is no sin in my body i have not spoken that which is not true knowingly nor have i done aught with a false heart grant thou that i may be like unto those favoured ones who are in the following and that i may be an osiris greatly favoured of the beautiful god and beloved of the lord of the world who am indeed a royal scribe who love thee ani victorious before the god osiris end of introductory hymns chapters one through ten of coming forth by day of the egyptian book of the dead by e a wallace budge this librivox recording is in the public domain chapter one vignettes the funeral procession to the tomb and the ceremony thereat are here depicted the mummy of the deceased lying in a funeral chest placed in a boat is being drawn along by oxen figures of the goddesses nephthys and isis stand at the head and foot respectively by the side kneels the wife of the deceased in the front of the boat stands the sem priest dressed in a panther's skin burning incense and sprinkling water and behind follow eight male mourners in the rear are servants drawing a small funeral chest surmounted by a figure of anubis and carrying vases of unguents along with the couch staff chair pallet etc of the deceased preceding the oxen drawing the funeral boat are men carrying on yokes boxes of flowers vases of unguents etc and a group of wailing women with uncovered heads and breasts who smite their heads and faces in token of grief close by stand a cow and her calf intended to be slaughtered for the funeral feast and tables loaded with offerings of herbs fruits etc at the door of the tomb stands the god of the dead anubis clasping the mummy of the deceased before which kneels the weeping wife at a table of funeral offerings stand two priests one the sem priest wears a panther's skin and holds in his hand a libation vase and censer the other holds in his right hand the instrument ur heka in the form of a ram-headed serpent the head of which is surmounted by an ureus and in his left hand an instrument in the shape of an adze 
with the former he is about to touch the mouth and eyes of the mummy and with the latter the mouth on the ground by their side lie the instruments which are to be employed in the ceremony of opening the mouth that is the ceremony which will give the deceased the power to eat and to drink and to talk in the next world namely the mesket the group of instruments in the form of ads the peshen kef the libation vases the boxes of purification the bandlet the feather etc behind them stands the reader who recites the funeral service from a papyrus roll and to the rear is a ministrant who holds the haunch of beef which is to be used in the ceremony at the door of the tomb text here begin the chapters of coming forth by day and of the songs of praise and glorifying and of coming forth from and of going into the glorious netter kurt in the beautiful amentet which are to be recited on the day of the burial whereby the deceased shall go in after coming forth saith osiris ani osiris the scribe ani homage to thee o bull of amentet the god thoth the king of eternity is with me i am the great god near the divine boat i have fought for thee i am one of the gods those divine chiefs who make osiris to be victorious over his enemies on the day of the way of words i am thy mediator o osiris i am one of the gods born of the goddess nut who slay the foes of osiris and who hold in bondage for him the fiend sabal i am thy mediator o horus i have fought for thee and i have put to flight the enemy for thy name's sake i am thoth who made osiris to be victorious over his enemies on the day of the weighing of words in the great house of the aged one ra who dwelleth in anu heliopolis i am teteti the son of teteti i was begotten in tatu i was born in tatu i am with those who weep and with the women who bewail osiris in the two lands of rekt and i make osiris to be victorious over his enemies ra commanded thoth to make osiris victorious over his enemies and that which was decreed for osiris thoth did for me i am with horus on the day of the clothing of tesh tesh and of the opening of the wells of water for the purification of the divine being whose heart moveth not and of the drawing the bolt of the door of the concealed things and restow i am with horus who acteth as the guardian of the left shoulder of osiris in sekum letopolis and i go in and i come forth from among the divine flames on the day of the destruction of the sabal fiends in sekum i am with horus on the days of the festivals of osiris and of the making of offerings on the sixth day festival and on the tanat festival which is celebrated in anu i am the ab priest who poureth out libations in tatu rear the dweller in the temple of osiris heliopolis on the day of casting up the earth i see the things which are concealed in restau i read from the book of the festival of the divine ram which is in tatu i am the sem priest and i perform his course i perform the duties of the great chief of the work on the day of placing the henu boat of the god seker upon its sledge i have grasped the spade on the day of digging the ground in sutton henen heracleopolis magna o ye who make perfected souls to enter into the temple of osiris may ye cause the perfected soul of osiris the scribe ani to be victorious with you in the temple of osiris may he hear as ye hear may he see as ye see may he stand as ye stand may he sit as ye sit therein o ye who give cakes and ale to perfected souls in the temple of osiris give ye cakes and ale at the two seasons that is at morn and at eve or sunrise and sunset to the soul of osiris ani who is victorious before all the gods of abtu abadas 
and who is victorious with you o oh, ye who open the way and lay open the paths to perfected souls in the temple of osiris open ye the way and lay open the paths to the soul of osiris the scribe and steward of all the divine offerings ani who is victorious with you may he enter in confidence and may he come forth in peace from the temple of osiris may he not be rejected may he not be turned back may he enter in as he pleaseth may he come forth as he desireth and may he be victorious may the things which he commandeth be performed in the temple of osiris may he walk and may he talk with you and may he become a glorious being along with you he hath not been found to rise up there and the balance having weighed him is now empty in the turn papyrus this chapter ends with the following lines for which no equivalent occurs in the earlier texts let not the decree of judgment passed upon me be placed or according to another reading made known in the mouths of the multitude may my soul lift itself up before osiris having been found to have been pure when on earth may i come before thee o lord of the gods may i arrive at the name of double right and truth may i be crowned like a god endowed with life may i give forth light like the company of the gods who dwell in heaven may i become like one of you lifting up my feet in the city of kur about may i see the sectet boat of the sacred sahu orion passing forth over the sky may i not be driven away from the sight of the lords of the tuat underworld or according to another reading the company of the gods may i smell the sweet savour of the food of the company of the gods and may i sit down with them may the kur heb the reader make invocation at my coffin and may i hear the prayers which are recited when the offerings are made may i draw nigh unto the neshem boat and may neither my soul nor its lord be turned back homage to thee o thou who art at the head of amentet thou osiris who dwellest in the city of nifu ur grant thou that i may arrive in peace in amentet and that the lords of ta Tet may receive me and may say unto me hail hail thou that comest in peace may they prepare for me a place by the side of the chief in the presence of the divine chiefs may isis and nephthys the two divine nursing goddesses receive me at the seasons and may i come forth into the presence of un nefer osiris in triumph may i follow after horus through re Stathet, and after osiris in tatu and may i perform all the transformations according to my heart's desire in every place wheresoever my ka double pleaseth so to do rubric if this text be known by the deceased upon earth or if he causeth it to be done in writing upon his coffin then will he be able to come forth on any day that he pleaseth and to enter into his habitation without being driven back the cakes and ale and haunches of meat which are upon the altar of ra shall be given unto him and his homestead shall be among the fields in the sectet anru and to him shall be given wheat and barley therein and for he shall be vigorous there even as he was upon earth chapter one b vignette the god anubis jackal-headed standing by the side of the bier on which lies the mummy text the chapter of making the sahu the spiritual body to enter into that tuat underworld on the day of the funeral when these words are to be said homage to thee o thou that dwellest in set to set cert of amentet osiris the royal scribe nec to amen victorious knoweth thee and he knoweth thy name deliver thou him from the worms which are in rostau which live upon the bodies of men and women and which feed upon their blood for osiris the favoured one of the god of his city the royal scribe nec to amen victorious knoweth you and he knoweth your names let this be the first bidding of osiris neber who keepeth hidden his body may he give air and escape from the terrible one who dwelleth in the bite of the stream of amentet and may he decree the actions of him that is rising up let him pass on unto him whose throne is within the darkness who giveth glory in ristau o lord of light come thou and swallow up the worms which are in amentet 
the great god who dwelleth in tatu and who is unseen heareth his prayers but those who are in affliction fear him as he cometh forth with the sentence of the divine block i osiris the royal scribe next to amen have come bearing the decree of nebercher and horus hath taken possession of his throne for him his father the lord of those who are in the boat of father horus hath ascribed praise unto him he cometh with tidings and may he see anu heliopolis their chief standeth upon the earth before him and the scribes magnify him at the door of their assemblies and they bind his swathings in anu he hath led captive heaven and he hath seized the earth in his grasp neither the heavens nor the earth can be taken away from him for behold he is ra the first-born of the gods his mother suckleth him and she giveth to him her breast in the horizon rubric the words of this chapter are to be recited after the deceased is laid to rest in amentet whereby the region tananet is made to be content with her lord then shall osiris the royal scribe neck to amen triumphant come forth and he shall embark in the boat of ra and his body upon its bier shall be counted with those therein and he shall be established in that tuat underworld chapter two vignette a man standing upright holding a staff text the chapter of coming forth by day and of living after death saith osiris ani victorious hail one shining from the moon hail one shining from the moon grant that this osiris ani may come forth among those multitudes which are outside and let him be established as a dweller or let him go about among the denizens of heaven and let the underworld be opened unto him and behold osiris osiris ani shall come forth by day to do whatsoever he pleaseth upon the earth among the living ones chapter three vignette this chapter has no vignette text another chapter like unto the preceding the chancellor-in-chief new triumphant saith hail thou god tem who comest forth from the great deep and who shinest with glory under the form of the double lion god send out with might thy words unto those who are in thy presence and let the chancellor-in-chief new triumphant enter into their assembly he hath performed the decree which hath been spoken to the mariners of ra at eventide and the osiris new triumphant liveth after he hath died even as doth ra day by day as ra is born from yesterday even so shall the osiris new be born from yesterday and every god shall rejoice at the life of the osiris new even as they rejoice at the life of ptah when he maketh his appearance from the great temple of the aged one which is in anu chapter four vignette this chapter has no vignette text the chapter of passing over the celestial road of ristau the overseer of the palace the chancellor-in-chief the osiris new triumphant saith i open out a way over the watery abyss which formeth a path between the two combatants horus and set and i have come may the fields of osiris be given over into my power chapter five vignette a seated man text the chapter of not letting work be done in the underworld by nebseni the scribe and draughtsman in the temple of ptah who saith i lift up the hand of the man who is inactive i have come from the city of unu hermopolis i am the divine soul which liveth and i lead with me the hearts of the apes chapter six vignette a standing bearded male figure text the chapter of making the shabti figure to do work for a man in the underworld the scribe nebseni the draughtsman in the temples of the north and south the man highly venerated in the temple of ptah saith o thou shabti figure of the scribe nebseni the son of the scribe thena victorious and of the lady of the house mutreshtha victorious if i be called or if i be adjudged to do any work whatsoever of the labours which are to be done in the underworld behold for thee opposition will there be set aside by a man in his turn 
let the judgment fall upon thee instead of upon me always in the matter of sowing the fields of filling the watercourses with water and of bringing the sands of this east to the west the shabti figure answereth verily i am here and will come whithersoever thou biddest me chapter seven vignette the deceased spearing a serpent text the chapter of passing over the abominable back of apep the overseer of the palace the chancellor-in-chief new triumphant saith hail thou creature of wax who leadest away victims and destroyest them and who livest upon the weak and helpless may i never become weak and helpless before thee may i never suffer collapse before thee and thy poison shall never enter into my members for my members are as the members of the god tem and since thou thyself dost not suffer collapse i shall not suffer collapse o oh, let not the pains of death which come upon thee enter into my members i am the god tem and i am in the foremost part of nu the sky and the power which protecteth me is that which is with all the gods for ever i am he whose name is hidden and whose habitation is holy for millions of years i am he who dwelleth therein and i come forth along with the god tem i am he who shall not be condemned i am strong i am strong chapter eight vignette the emblem of amenta towards which ani clad in white and holding a staff in his left hand and a bandlet in the right is walking text the chapter of passing through amentet and coming forth by day saith osiris ani the city of unu hermopolis is opened my head is sealed up o thoth and strong is the eye of horus i have delivered the eye of horus which shineth with splendours on the forehead of ra the father of the gods i am the same osiris the dweller in amentet osiris knoweth his day and that he shall live through his period of life and shall not i do likewise i am the moon god who dwelleth among the gods i shall not perish stand up therefore o horus for osiris hath reckoned thee among the gods chapter nine vignette a ram having upon his head the atef crown standing upon a pylon shaped pedestal which rests on a green reed mat before him is an altar upon which stand a libation vase and a lotus flower the scribe ani clothed in white stands with both hands raised in adoration text the chapter of coming forth by day after having made the passage through the tomb saith osiris ani hail soul thou mighty one of strength verily i am here i have come i behold thee i have passed through the tuat underworld i have seen my divine father osiris i have scattered the gloom of night i am his beloved one i have come i have seen my divine father osiris i have stabbed the heart of suti i have performed all the ceremonies for my divine father osiris i have opened every way in heaven and in earth i am the son who loveth his father osiris i have become a sahu i have become a ku i am furnished with what i need hail every god hail every ku i have made a path for myself i osiris the scribe ani victorious chapter ten vignette ani clad in white spearing a serpent text another chapter to be said by a man who cometh forth by day against his enemies in the underworld saith osiris ani i have divided the heavens i have cleft the horizon i have traversed the earth following upon his footsteps the mighty khu taketh possession of me and carrieth me away because behold i am provided with his magical words for millions of years i eat with my mouth i crush my food with my jaw-bones behold i am the god who is the lord of the tuat underworld may there be given unto me osiris ani these things in perpetuity without fail or lessening End of chapters one through ten of coming forth by day